Hello and good day, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hope you're having a good one. This is the Public Law Radio. I heard uh, every Friday from 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 12, and uh, we are broadcasting at No Borders Radio, Tina Soar, and also simulcasting at TammyPepperman.org. Your donations help us keep on the air as we're not sponsored by any corporations or uh, endorsed by the Broadcasting Board of Governors. So, that being said, let's get into it here for the September 12th, 2014 show. And I'm Bo, and here's my co host now. Tammy. Woo! I made it. Here's a heck of a week. I still haven't updated my uh, Leaving the Farm show from Saturday last. I'm far behind on the technical stuff, but not on anything else. Right, so you're just talking about your YouTube uh, postings, right? Yeah, I haven't yeah. updated TammyPepperin.org either. It's just been a heck of a week. Yeah, we'll get to it. Um, but you're listening live now, so we got the latest and greatest. And uh, I guess the first part of this, we should uh, put the emphasis on uh, what's going on with sports here, particularly the NFL. Some NBA stuff too, but they are really going after the sports industry. Well, we've been watching this for years, and um, the uh, coincidental injury rates are higher than they actually should be and um, getting down to the brass tacks here we've got now research coming out that says one in three NFL players have had injuries one in three retired NFL have previous injury and are facing uh, Alzheimer's and things like that and, and uh, you have to realize that these players are highly insured by these hedge fund management teams that are promoting injury in players. They have taught now the Roman citizens to injure themselves via sports in order for these doctors and psychiatrists and all these hedge fund management attorneys to cash in and uh, discharge congressional bankruptcy. And finally, this is coming out in the mainstream media. Yeah, they're saying... Uh in an article put out by Forbes here today, NFL players have a 30% chance of Alzheimer's or dementia, new NFL concussion data suggests. Playing in the NFL brings fame, fortune, and dramatically higher risk of suffering from serious brain diseases. Well, this is the same thing they were doing with the gladiators, remember? They trained them to fight with each other to create an injury and run mock and that others could cash in on this uh, entertainment. And uh, here we have evidence that these same Roman oligarchs are doing the same thing. It's just guys done under something else. And they specialize these players and pay them lots of money. But it's still bottom line, they're gladiators in the uh, arena. Yeah, I think they spelled that out well in that uh, television series about uh, Spartacus. That was one of my favorites. Really shows how they, you know, garner the slaves and train them as gladiators, and you know their handlers are betting on them, and the whole ball of wax, which is and just uh, same is. thing that's going on in different variants today. Right. Look at the gambling commission, and then look what a hedge fund is. It's a hedge on a bet, and um, you've got all these insurance schematics hedging all these bets and, and guaranteeing these things occur because of the sport itself. They, they train the gladiators to play a sport a, a very specific way in order to create more and more head injuries. It's just a cyclical pattern and it's just sick. Come on. And these high insurance payouts when one of them dies, my goodness. Uh, they need to be held accountable for this. It's not only bankruptcy fraud, it's Medicaid fraud. Medicare fraud, insurance fraud, securities fraud, uh, you name it. Yeah, and, and, and we're seeing a bunch of uh, 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 
NFL players who are getting the screws put to them on um, legal matters. Here we've got Adrian Peterson has been indicted. A uh, lawyer says it was parental discipline. Uh, the Minnesota Viking star has been indicted on a felony charge of injury to a child, a Texas Sheriff's Lieutenant said. The team won't play him Sunday. Well, it, that all depends because uh, punishing your children and, you know, if there's unintentional injuries, um, of course that's not with intent. That There has to be that intent to prove or evidence a crime has occurred. And if there's no intent to harm, and it was in, indeed a, a form of discipline, um, then he shouldn't be charged with any crime, and, and whereby this only is a redistribution of all of his assets, which again, going back to the gladiators, what were they doing? They were raising these houses and uh, taking these men as slaves and making sure that they didn't have anything left when they were done with them. And that's what kept the Roman oligarchy in, in play, in power, for the longest time until, of course, they were redistributed by this specialized female. But that's probably for another show, or you can go back to the Leaving the Farm show on feminism. And it, it explains this uh, nice little gameplay that the Roman oligarchy always had in place until now. Um... In one write-up, attorney Rustin Harden says the charge accuses Peterson of using a branch or a switch to spank the son. He says Peterson has cooperated with authorities and used his judgment as a parent to discipline his son. Harden says Peterson regrets the incident, but never intended to harm the boy. Vikings say Peterson will not be active for Sunday's home game against New England. Allegations come during a week in which the NFL has been under heavy scrutiny for the way it handled a domestic violence case involving former Ravens running back Ray Rice and his then fiance. Right. Well, that one, the video shows intent to harm. There's two different uh, stories at play there because the domestic violence incident was, it was not called for. And, you know, a a every child remembers uh, either going out to, to fetch a switch or uh, one was already at the ready to, to whoop up on us when we were younger, but it was done in the, the action of correction most of the time, and it didn't leave any marks. It was just a, a form of shock, which, you know, that's what children need at times. I'm not advocating beating children with any implement at all. I've never had to uh, raise my hand to my children, but... Um, other people are raised in different ways, and, and if he didn't intend to harm, that means he didn't intend to harm. There's no ability of parents to try at that point in time. New York Times, upon further review, is calling the NFL's response to the Ray Rice case disgraceful. Absolutely. The National mean, Football League will have a hard time recovering from its cavalier mishandling of the domestic abuse case against Ray Rice. The Gridian star uh, who punched his then fiance unconscious in February in an elevator in Atlantic City. Right. At first, the league sought to minimize the incident by ordering a mere two game suspension of the Baltimore Ravens running back, despite a security video excerpt showing him dragging the limp body of Janie Palmer, the woman who is now his wife, from the elevator. The police charge of felony assault followed soon after. As controversy grew, the NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell apologized for his misjudgment and promised stronger punishment for players who attacked their domestic partners. Uh -huh, misjudgment. That was absolutely abuse uh, with intent to harm and uh, uncalled for in any way, and, and his treatment or mistreatment and mishandling was intentional. He doesn't care about men, women, or children, he cares about the bottom dollar. Um, let's see, from a write-up on uh, Xfinity, Hawks general manager Fer uh, Ferry, F-E-R-R-Y, takes indefinite leave of absence. From the Atlanta AP, Atlanta Hawks general manager Danny Ferry took an indefinite leave of absence Friday, making the move under fire for his racially charged comments about a player. Hawks CEO Steve Kunin has resisted calls for Ferry to be dismissed, but said the 47-year-old GM 
ask for the leave. I hope that this time away from the Hawks organization allows him the privacy he needs to listen to the community, to learn about his mistakes, and to begin the long process of personal healing, Coonan said in a statement. Ferry issued his own statement saying he plans to undergo sensitivity training and meet with local leaders. He gave no indication that he plans to step down. Now, this is in, in the NBA, by the way, uh, Basketball Association. And let's see, he's like a guy who would have a nice store out front and sell you uh, counterfeit stuff out of the back, Ferry said on the call, which was recorded. Dang, who was born in what is now South Sudan, signed with the Miami Heat, but didn't know if Ferry's comments uh, until this week. Deng said he was proud of his African roots, while adding he was saddened and disappointed that this way of thinking still exists today. I am even more disturbed that it was shared so freely in a business setting. Kunin said Ferry was disciplined for his comments, but refused to disclose the punishment. Both Ferry and Kunin has said the general manager was merely repeating statements made by, by others in scouting reports to, on Deng. And... Um, you know, and this and, and this racism that goes on today has been kept alive by Congress. No, was none that other racist? than was that racist, or was he calling him a shyster? I didn't hear any racist intonation. I know he just brought it in there. So, right. oh, this is racism. Oh, you you just called me corrupt because I'm black. That's like uh, Obama saying that, or uh, any one of them saying that. You you just called me a shyster because I'm black. You're just picking on me, and, that, and that's what Jesus pointed out with the doctrine of the Pharisee. Remember, he says, you know what? They said you're just mad at me because we didn't bring bread this time, and he says you brought bread time and time again. I'm pissed off because you're you're espousing the doctrine of the Pharisee. What the heck are you talking about? And they do it over and over again. It's just this common theme that we see running through these corrupt organizations. But he merely called him a shyster. He didn't call him any uh, racial slurs or anything. Right. They just like to introduce that idea of racism, a concept, over and over and over. Or anyism. Yes. All he did was call out a shyster. He said he's like a thief. He's got a nice storefront. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 23. They've got a great outside of the cup is just pristine, but the inside is filthy. Why are we allowing this guy to be crucified? Because he, he just called him a shyster. He didn't say anything racist. racist. It's an interesting day. Let's see, you gave me the story here. Um, I haven't had time to read it yet. Um, from the BBC. Either. University of Nottingham Blaze, 50 firefighters, uh, firefighters at the scene. I didn't look at it. I just saw it just now. Um, it was breaking out of the BBC within the last couple hours. I haven't had time to process anything more. Okay. All right. So this is just uh, breaking news on a fire in Radford. It's thought to have started in the GlaxoSmithKline building on Triumph Road. It's interesting, um, you know, because GSK has been under fire. I wonder if they're trying to attempt to maintain an insurance claim by burning their building down, kind of like Hitler did with the rice tape. Hmm. It's interesting because China's after them. Japan cut um, a lot of uh, support after the, uh, remember that one that was released uh, that was causing all the uh, sterility in, in young girls due to that one vaccine? Gardasil, yeah, that was theirs, and and Japan's been against them, and and uh, noticed many things, and I'm wondering if that's not a a uh, insurance scam. Nottinghamshire Fire and Rescue tweeted, "Help our crews by staying away from the Triumph Road area and close doors and windows if your local flying debris making conditions difficult." This fire service said it was called out to the fire at about 20, 35 hours BST. Uh, that's right, British Standard Time. Spokesman said the building was currently under construction. Steve Beach from Radio Nottingham at the scene said, I can see embers falling from what is a chemistry laboratory that's being built. 
being funded by GlaxoSmithKline of the Jubilee campus in Nottingham. There's a huge elevated jet squirting water. Hundreds of people have come out to see it. There's a huge plume of smoke above, above uh, Nottingham this evening. So, it says, thankfully there have been no casualties at, at this is a building. This was still under construction. So. Right. It, again, it looks like an insurance scheme. It's quite interesting, these folks. Maybe. So, we'll see what more comes out of that. If they find the reason here, it would uh, tell, us, tell us a little more. Um, let's see. Cameron and company make desperate plea to Scots to stay in the Union. Boy, yeah, they're really they, those guys really don't want them to leave, do they? No, they're really hurting. They're hurting for support. They're hurting for patriotism. They're hurting. And there's no good reason for them to stay in the Union, really. Absolutely not. I'll go with um, Kim Jong Un's recommendation to get out. Absolutely. Yeah, let's see here. So, this is at the RT. Three of Britain's mainstream party leaders have temporarily abandoned their seats of power in Westminster to travel to Scotland. The trip's part of last ditch effort to sway Scottish opinion towards a no vote in the upcoming independence referendum. Journeying separately and addressing different audiences throughout Scotland on Wednesday, Prime Minister David Cameron, Liberal Democrat leader Democrat leader Nick Clegg, and Labour's Ed Miliband will issue an impassioned joint pleas to Scots to vote to remain a part of what they insist will be a reformed United Kingdom. Yeah, we promise we'll do better. We've only been killing you for so many years now, and I swear I won't do it again. Please, please, please let me traffic you. We're bankrupt, and if you don't join us, that means that we have to work off this debt. Yeah, it seems like uh, the Scottish... Uh, alternative to stay in the you know the, this union uh, would be Stockholm syndrome and uh, you know Stockholm syndrome is basically uh, where uh, one um, patronizes their captors okay in a joint public statement the three leaders acknowledge that there's a lot that divides us, but emphasize that there's one thing on which we agree passionately. The United Kingdom is better together. Yeah, better, for better, the, better for who? Congress. Yeah. Congress, your, trans your transgressors are begging you. Please, 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 please allow them use of your bodies. They don't want to use theirs. So, uh, when does that take place here? Uh, right around the corner. I haven't been keeping tabs on it. Uh, whatever happens, they're going to be foreclosed on anyway. Right. It's not like they can get away with anything this time. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens there. Um, Remember, aiding and abetting the known enemy of mankind is punishable by death. Civilly or otherwise. Just remember that. I don't like icky things and blood and gore and guts and stuff. I don't mind civil death at all. Yeah, let's see here. Um, hmm. Okay, this story here didn't have a direct link. So, let's see now. Uh, but it says, many in Cato... Catalonia want independence. Absolutely. But such a move would be a disaster for Spain. Absolutely. And we've been watching that one come through as well. It's France and Germany now is uh, set to go independent as well, which is really interesting to see. Really, very, very interesting. Federal Republic. Of Restrictive Germany. measures against Russia in force. Second day. Let's see if this headline will come up. And this is from uh, Eurlex dot Europa dot EU. Looks like a it's actually PDF a, document. Right. It's from the Journal of the European Union. 
And let's see here. What are we looking at here? Legislation here from the European Union. Banking. We don't have to go into that one over there. Okay. But, All right. Um, it's been interesting watching the, the European Union and their uh, most recent actions. ChicagoTribune.com. Rock Island Sheriff pleads guilty to sending harassing texts and he resigns. I saw that. The Rock Island County Sheriff has resigned after pleading guilty Thursday to sending harassing texts to a woman he met at a gym two years ago, prosecutor said. Sheriff Jeff Boyd resigned, ended his candidacy for re-election, and agreed to give up his pension, according to a release from Illinois Attorney General's Lisa Madigan's office and court documents. Boyd, a Democrat who took office in 2010, had been unopposed in the election, according to the county clerk's website. Boyd, who met the woman in 2012, committed what the released, uh, what the release called attempting attempted cyber stalking, repeatedly sending texts to a woman after she told him to leave her alone, according to his plea agreement. Yeah, that's scary. He's an armed uh, enforcement there. It's not something to shake his stick at. So there's, uh, there's one woman out there, at least it uh, seems not to be a uh, holster sniffer. Uh, in the words of Rocco Vanzetti, let's see. Prosecutor said Boyd began sending the unwanted text messages in February or earlier, and according to his plea agreement, he should have known that what he was doing could cause a reasonable person to suffer emotional distress. Boyd tried to use his position as sheriff to intimidate and harass the woman who is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico, according to the release. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled back, since you need to be free. So, there's more to read there, if you want to follow up on that at the SouthBendTribune.com. Uh, let's see here from spokesman.com. Yeah, I Spokane love Spokane attorney's condo searched after rape. Yeah, I like that to hear that one. Um, you know, for a long time, the good old boys club wasn't allowing charges against attorneys in Spokane. Yeah, it's a rape allegation actually against an attorney, an attorney who made a failed bid to be. Spokane County Prosecutor eight years ago is under investigation for rape. The allegations are contained in public records filed in connection with a search warrant. An attorney for Robert E. Caruso, 76, calls the allegations completely false and said the woman's story is uncooperated. Bob made a mistake trying to help that girl, the attorney David Partovi said Thursday. So this is the attorney's attorney. Absolutely. But her clothes happen to be in her, his place. Caruso has not been arrested. His lawyer said Caruso voluntarily submitted to DNA a DNA test in an effort to prove his innocent. Police said the, the document, a declaration for a search warrant that a 22-year-old woman told them she had been in a car crash Saturday at Maple Street and Interstate 90 when Caruso drove by and offered to help her. She told police that Caruso instead drove her to his condominium on South Hill where he drugged and raped her despite her injuries from a car accident, according to the records. Yeah. What's well, a vicious... Oh, it gets better. Vicious individual here. His story doesn't match up with what the evidence says. Partovi said police have not questioned Caruso's neighbors and the other potential witnesses. A neighbor who lives in an adjacent apart adjacent apartment said Thursday that she will she was home all night Saturday and heard no noises from Caruso's apartment despite the walls being paper thin. Isn't that funny? She did that without any um, influence. Nobody asked her anything. She just volunteered that information because they said the cops haven't spoken to the neighbors. Hmm. He already found himself a volunteer witness through this court sciences. Uh, incorporated apparently I didn't hear anything said the neighbor who spoke on condition of anonymity not a single thing she said it was common to hear Caruso who was known for more 
she's known for more than two years, move around in the apartment. The alleged victim told police she'd attempted to scream for help, but was unable to resist Caruso because she was drugged. The search warrant lists physical evidence, including the woman's clothing found by police in Caruso's condo. The documents filed Wednesday say police also found evidence that supported her version of events, including pills and a pair of handcuffs dangling from the headboard. A witness told police that he found the woman hiding in an alleyway wearing only underwear. The woman told police she escaped when Caruso became unconscious late Saturday. During his run for office against Spokane County Prosecuting Attorney Steve Tucker in 2006, Caruso received 36% of the vote. Caruso's professional conduct has been questioned in the past, including just last month when the Washington State Court of Appeals removed him from a divorce case after he and his client appealed sanctions supposedly imposed during child custody proceedings. Absolutely, he's got to have that money coming in. Controversy. The trial court had found that Caruso and his client engaged in a course of conduct intended to harass, cause unnecessary delay, or needlessly increase the cost of litigation. They were ordered to pay 55000 in attorney fees and costs. Caruso appeal, his appeal, argued he and his client should not have to pay, but if they did, his client should foot the bill. Appellate court judge uh, judges declared his representation a conflict of interest and barred him from representing the client in further matters. Caruso is a partner in a private practice law firm in Spokane. He was not available for comment there Absolutely Thursday. Absolutely not. He had a dinner date or something. They're all there. From the Philly.com, former judge charged with perjury for allegedly fixing DUI case. Former Pennsylvania judge is facing criminal charges for allegedly improperly dropping a DUI case brought against the prosecutor's nephew. Dwight K. Shaner, 71, who served as a magisterial district judge in Fayette County from January 1986 through his retirement last December, is charged with felony perjury and obstructing the administration of law, according to a criminal complaint filed Thursday by the State Attorney's General Office. Shaner presided over a preliminary hearing on December 13, 2011, in a criminal case brought against Robert Lee Rudnick, who is accused of slamming his SUV into a mailbox and guardrail in Dunbar Township, then fleeing the scene without stopping. State police arrested Rudnick at his home, where he admitted to crashing the vehicle after drinking at a local sports bar. The breath test revealed his blood alcohol level to be more than double the legal limit. Rennick is the nephew of Lindo Cordero, who was at the time a Fayette County Assistant District Attorney responsible for prosecuting cases in Shaner's court, court document state. At the time of his arrest, Rennick was seeking admission into divisionary program for first-time offenders in connection with an unrelated DUI case brought against him several months before oh my goodness. in Con he's just, Connellsville. He's just a threat to humanity. Terrible. Yep. I guess, you know, that there's that entitlement people feel when they're related to somebody in power, like a district attorney. Yeah, you can't arrest me for drunk driving. Uh, now they got all of them in the shoot, don't they? Yeah. Good. Um... Let's see here, right, this is a long site. Read more then. Where are we at here? At the time of his arrest, okay, let's see, during Rednick's preliminary hearing, Shane allegedly denied a request to lead investigator, um, a request by lead investigator Trooper Joseph Ross of the Pennsylvania State Police to continue the case due to the last minute recusal of then prosecutor Cardaro according to the criminal complaint filed against Shaner. Shaner then dismissed the case without benefit of hearing any testimony, the complaint states. After the hearing, he allegedly asked Ross to step into his chambers, lit a cigarette, and told the trooper that he dropped the charges because he was catching some heat from Cardaro uh, over the fact that that the defendant was her nephew, according to both the criminal complaint and grand jury findings unsealed Thursday. Cordero 
who is now a judge on the Court of Common Pleas in Fayette County, maintains she did not alert anyone to the fact that Rudnick was her nephew until the morning of the hearing when she recused herself from the proceedings according to the presentment. She has not been charged with any crimes in connection with the incident. Right. It looks like she did good. She recused herself. She wasn't playing favorites. It was just the judge doing her a favor back channel. And now the poor judge is a fall guy and the attorney gets away scot-free. See how that works? Yeah. Attorneys are vicious. Fayette County resident in March 2013 filed a complaint with the state attorney's general's office claiming Shanner had fixed Rennick's DUI case, touching off a grand jury probe. During the review, Shanner's longtime secretary testified that she couldn't remember the judge denying a request by the Commonwealth to continue a similar case in the 17 years she worked for his office, according to the grand jury. Shanner is further accused of lying under oath during grand jury proceedings on September 18, 2013, yeah. suggesting that Ross simply never requested a continuance of Rennick's case. At least three witnesses to the hearing, including Rennick's mother, offered testimony to the contrary. The grand jury concluded Shanner's account of his actions was not credible, but merely an effort to explain the dismissal of a case that occurred for an improper and illegal purpose. Shaner was executed. I'm sorry. Shaner was expected <laughs> to surrender to authorities Thursdays, uh, Thursday, according to a news release from the state attorney's general's office. The Judicial Conduct Board of Pennsylvania filed a petition Thursday seeking to suspend Shaner from any future judicial assignments and to bar him from being granted senior status through the administrative office of Pennsylvania courts. State Attorney General's Office refiled charges against Rudnick in March 2013. He pleaded guilty this past February to DUI and accidents involving damage to unattended vehicles or property. He was ordered to serve uh, up to six months of intermediate punishment, including 60 days of house arrest to pay fines and restitution, and to have his driver's license suspended for one year. Still kind of out there. Habitual problem with him drunk driving. Yeah. So a little release him to see if he can cause more damage, I guess. And hopefully he doesn't kill anybody in the meantime. So another one from Philadelphia.com. Police officer was locked up yesterday for allegedly assaulting his wife. Wow. Joseph Griffin, 30, was charged with endangering the welfare of a child, simple assault, terroristic threats, intimidation of a witness, harassment, and recklessly endangering another person, police said. According to the district attorney's office, the assault unfolded on June 4 inside the couple's home in northeast Philadelphia. Griffin, an eight-year uh, eight year veteran of the force, worked in South Philadelphia's third district. He has been suspended from the force for 30 days with the intent to dismiss. Let's see, also from uh, Philadelphia, the Philly.com, Philadelphia District Attorney's Office is investigating the embezzlement of $210,000 from the region's publicly funded marketing agency, and in the process, reviewing how the agency dealt with the matter when it was uncovered two years ago. Money had been used to pay for personal purchases by Visit Philadelphia's Chief Financial Officer Joyce Levitt, who was permitted to resign rather than face criminal charges when she made restitution. Visit Philadelphia handled the matter inter internally and did not report the misappropriation of funds, which extended over five years oh, to law enforcement. They're aiding and abetting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Visit Philadelphia was notified of the district attorney's investigation in June when its chief executive officer, Merrill Levitz, received a request for documents from Yvonne J. Ruitz and assistant, direct, uh, assistant district attorney in the Economic and Cybercrime Unit, according to copies of the correspondence obtained by the Inquirer. Prosecutor's office subsequently requested further details and extensive documentation. Visit Philadelphia was asked to provide the additional information by Friday. So, and there's more to read there over at philly.com. So, 
shakeups occurring over in uh, Philadelphia. Absolutely. City of brotherly love. Mm hmm. From the HeraldStandard.com. Former Fayette County Magisterial, Magisterial District Judge Dwight Shaner has been charged with perjury and obstructing the administrative law related to the incident in December 2011. So that's another write up from that. Yeah, that's uh, the Shaner one still. The Shaner. Uh, Freep.com, ex Little League treasurer, denies she embezzled. Three hundred thousand. Her attorney says. This is terrible. What's she happening. did it. She's guilty. It's just terrible what's been happening in Detroit. Karen A. Dimitri admittedly denies or adamantly denies the charges that she embezzled about three hundred thousand during a five-year span while serving as treasurer for the Clinton Valley Little League. Her attorney said today, Matt doesn't add up. In the amount of money alleged to have been taken versus money taken in, her attorney Dan Garan said after Dimitri was released on a $10,000 personal bond after arraignment in 41B District Court in Clinton Township, not one child was ever denied a game. All of those obligations were taken care of. Absolutely, and you have to buy your own outfits and you have to buy your own gloves and everything else while everybody's cashing in on this little league schematic. If she could steal almost... Uh, half a million dollars? What the heck are parents doing not buying their little uniforms and all this stuff? All it is is a money-making game. And your kids are being used as fodder. Cash cows. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's deplorable. These kids got enough trouble these days. Parents have enough financial matters to deal with. Uh, from the DailyMail.com, or DailyMailCO.uk, but uh, the headline reads, Former daycare worker 21 is convicted of kidnap and rape of a girl 5 after donning a Muslim dress to impersonate child's mother and snatch her from school. That one was like one of the sickest things I've seen in a long time. Yeah, this one's totally awful. Christina... Rugusters, 21, was found guilty of kidnapping, aggravated assault, and decent deviant sexual intercourse. Prosecutors say she impersonated a five-year-old's mother so she could abduct her from school and later molested her during a 19-hour ordeal. 19 hours she tortured this child. The Philadelphia girl was found half-naked the next morning at a cold, dark playground. Former daycare worker, let's see here, let's see, so she, she donned a Muslim dress and a veil to impersonate the girl's mother and then took her from Bryant Elementary School in January 2013. And wouldn't the girl say, hey, that's not my mother, she would know, right? Then posted a, posted his, uh, posed as three different people to trick the blindfolded child. Right, her mom is Muslim, so she wore a veil and scarf and everything else, and so it's, it was just sad, sick, sick and twisted that anybody would do this type of horrifying thing upon children. Let's see. The defense had questioned during the three-week trial whether Regusters could have acted alone, but prosecutors said she had viewed child pornography and Japanese anime involving child sexual torture and also looked up how to destroy DNA evidence. All the evidence pointed to the existence of one abductor and assailant, Augustus, Prosecutor Aaron O'Brien said. Augustus, who is scheduled for sentencing December 15th, was convicted on all counts, including uh, kidnapping, aggra aggravated assault, and indecent, deviant sexual intercourse. She turned down a plea that would have put her behind bars for 40 to 80 years, according to her attorney. The child said she was blindfolded and stashed under a bed for most of her captivity, but recalled hearing a talking bird, a key detail that helped police close in on the suspect. The defense argued that three other people uh, home that day would have heard the girl's cries during the attack. Defense attorney W.F. Fred Harrison Jr. suggested an alternative theory that his client helped an unnamed man commit the crime. Augusta's DNA, along with a trace of semen was found on the t-shirt 
girl was wearing when she was located. Well, girls don't have semen, so right. makes it pretty obvious there, don't it? Right, and she should be rolling on the other guy, but she didn't. She didn't take the police, so he must have some pretty good, good uh, law enforcement or something. So my guess is he's somebody in a position of higher power. Otherwise, she wouldn't be so fearful. She would have rolled on him. So, however, other key evidence was never found, including the girl's clothes, her backpack, the clothing kidnapped or worn in the school, or the object believed to have been used in the attack. After the verdict, Harrison said he still believes other people were involved. Absolutely. I just don't think... The female doesn't have semen either. I just don't think that his plan was something conceived by a 19-year-old to do all that was done in this case, Harrison said. I don't believe it. Nope. And now seven-year-old girl suffered devastating injuries and needed a colostomy. But she also recovered physically and is now in second grade. She testified briefly during the trial. Gusters had moved in with an aunt in Philadelphia after her father went to prison in Maryland for assaulting her and her sister. She had worked at a daycare program the girl attended after school but had been suspended and was home the day of the abduction. Right. School officials did not realize the girl was missing for six hours until dismissal time. Victim's family suing the Philadelphia school, school district. There you go, because it was the school district. So you're looking for somebody in a position of power, and to all law enforcement, you need to protect that female that's in jail. Even though she's a pedophile, uh, there's a threat of death upon her head by those that she's covering for. And it's most likely somebody in a position of power. From the NY Daily News, California golf coach Andrew Nisbet admits to sexually abusing boys and murder for, for hire. The 32-year-old instructor has caught the molesting three students and trying to get a hitman to kill them, according to the Almeida County DA, the once well-regarded coach, is avoiding a life sentence. The California golf instructor pleaded guilty Thursday to molesting three of his students between the ages of 12 and 17, and then later plotting to kill them from jail. Andrew Nisbet, 32, who worked as a Los Cazitas golf course in Livermore, faced nearly 80 felony charges after authorities said he sexually assaulted three boys between 2009 and 2012. He pleaded guilty to seven felonies, including murder, solicitation, possessing child pornography, and lewd and less vicious acts on a minor, Almeida County District Attorney Office announced. Nisbet was arrested December 7, 2013, just one day before he was set to get a Youth Leadership Award from the PGA's Northern California section, San Francisco Examiner reported. He then allegedly wrote several letters from a cell at Santa Rita Jail to contract uh, to a contract killer who turned out to be a confidential informant who handed the notes to authorities according to a copy of the court documents obtained by the San Francisco Chronicle. The letters included information about each victim and the price offered for each hit, court papers show. Nisbet, who is scheduled to be sentenced to more than 27 years in prison, could have faced a life sentence. Sick. Animals. Animals. Suspicious. Yeah, definitely. From WXII12.com news. North Carolina police detective charged with sexual battery. This is in Pembroke, North Carolina. Police detective has been suspended after he was charged with two counts of a misdemeanor sexual battery. Fayetteville Observer reported that town attorney Gary Locklear said that 45-year-old Reese Oxendine was told of the suspension late Tuesday. State Bureau of Investigation filed the criminal charges Monday. Locklear said the charges stem from allegations of sexual harassment made by a female Pembroke Town employee in March. Police conducted an internal investigation and Oxidine was suspended for three days. 
Locklear said Robeson County District Attorney John Brett then asked the State Bureau of Investigation to investigate. Okay. These are the stories that set Master Lewis off this week, too. He threatened to bash my head in. Or he doesn't like accountability for pedophiles and pimps and assaulters and vicious folks. No, that agent is just vile with the false allegations and... Viciousness. Threaten, uh, got me, too, for just posting news. Yeah, you he know? doesn't discriminate against his victims. He just likes being in a position of power. I mean, it's just been interesting seeing how uh, harassing he is, attempting to be intimidating, which, of course, you know, it's kind of hard to intimidate me, but it does. It causes females to go into fear when, when these effeminate males threaten to bash their heads in. Yeah, and his mantra is just typical of all agents, you know, using Delphi and then, um, you know, false allegations, you know, can't handle the questions yeah. that, I, you know, we don't answer the questions the way he wants, and so he right. says we don't answer the questions. Right. And the, his questions were between civil and criminal laws and stuff, right. which were yes. all under the law merchant. Right, which is psychiatry. He's acting as a psychiatrist. Uh, attempting to change the subject after he's asked for evidence over and over and um, you know projection he just projects on everybody else but the most interesting was that I was posting these stories in the same room and in the same presence that he was in and he just went nuts threatening to bash my head in because he sees now he and his ilk are being held accountable for this crap yeah those Comments of his are too vested to be your average Joe. So Absolutely. you're known by your works and actions. All right. Anyways, going on from insurancenewsnet.com, Milton therapist charged with insurance fraud. This is Milton, Rhode Island, a license, a licensed marriage and family therapist with an office in Milltown, was arrested by state police on Thursday and charged with insurance fraud for the alleged larceny larceny of more than $83,000 from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Rhode Island. Denise A. Florent, 55, of 552 West Main Road, was also charged with obtaining money under false pretenses, over $1,500, and filing a false document with a public official. She was arraigned in Newport District Court and released on her own reconnaissance. Her next scheduled court appearance is October 16th. State Police Financial Crimes Unit initiated the investigation after receiving a complaint from Blue Cross Blue Shield, the Rhode Island Special Investigations Unit. Florent is owner of Newport Psychological Services in Middletown. Investigators obtained an arrest warrant alleging that Florent had submitted fraudulent bills to Blue Cross Blue Shield for psychological testing on patients that she never performed. Right. Just a money-making scam. State police said that 19 patients confirmed that they were billed for bogus services, and several employees at her practice told the state police that they witnessed fraudulent billing practices. Penalties for obtaining money under false pretenses is up to 10 years in prison and fines up to $5,000, while an insurance fraud conviction has the same punishment. Filing a false document with a public official is a maximum of a year in prison and a thousand dollar fine. Anyone with information on the investigation is urged to call State Police Financial Crimes Unit at uh, US number 401-444-1201. And please do. I mean that's not like uh, a rarity, it's a common practice. So please do because we want her held accountable for everything that she's done upon humanity. Right. From the statecollege.com, um, a former state college psychologist is now facing criminal charges for allegedly having inappropriate sexual relationships with patients. The Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office said Richard Lenhart, 53, 293 Holman Avenue State College, prescribed, quote, touching therapy for two female patients. 
according to the criminal complaint that includes touching, stroking, and sexual contact with both women. Lenhardt is facing multiple charges, including aggravated, aggravated indecent assault, deviant sexual intercourse, sexual assault, indecent assault, and insurance fraud. Lenhardt operated a private practice at 137 South Pew Street State College. His license was revoked in March of last year. Investigators say Lenhardt victimized one woman over a 17-year period beginning in July 1994 and continuing through November 2011. The second woman was allegedly assaulted between June 2003 and March 2010. An investigation began more than three years ago. In February of 2011, one of the victims filed a complaint with the State Board of Psychology. According to the Attorney General's Office, State College Police later picked up the investigation before turning the case over to the Attorney General's Office. Spokesperson Lauren Bozart says charges were brought against Lenhart to in less than a year after the Attorney General's Office took the case. The Attorney General's Office says Len Hart submitted insurance claims using a code that would indicate he was rendering proper psychology services and treatment. He allegedly filed nearly 700 claims for more than $71,500 FRN. The Attorney General's Office says this is still an active investigation. Anyone with information about the case is asked to contact Special Agent Doug Hilliard at 717 717- Seven eight seven zero two seven two. From W A W B L uh, from W B A L T V dot com. Social worker teen counselor charged with child porn. Police find child porn on devices at Essex home of James Tinker the second, Essex, Maryland. A licensed social worker from Essex who told police he counsels teens has been charged with having and distributing child pornography. Baltimore County Police said they charged 46-year-old James Patrick Tinker II this week with possession and distribution of child pornography. Investigators began looking into Tinker in July when officials with the Crimes Against Children Unit discovered that someone from a home in the 2300 block of Turkey Point Road in Essex had been sharing child pornography on more than one occasion. Detectives served a search warrant on the home, which belonged to Tinker. They said they found several computer devices that contained images of child porn with Tinker knowingly and willfully distributed to others. Officials said Tinker is a licensed social worker at Turning Point in Baltimore, as well as a teen counselor at Anne Arundel Counseling in Glen Burnie. So far, investigators said there's no evidence that Tinker had any sexual contact with children. Tinker is being held at the Baltimore County Detention Center on $200,000 FRN bail. These things are sick. As we go along and find accountability for these child predators it just it, it's so sick to see these stories back to back and to, to, you know in the mainstream media, media it's just flooding with nothing but predation it's just sick yeah yeah it sure is and you know they're all the people that are in these positions and uh, the majority are the perpetrators and it always has been, and none of the uh, public law since we were able to uh, dump them old attorneys into that surety situation at uh, Northern Holding, they can now be held accountable, finally. And it's going to get worse out there. Like I said on my show Wednesday, it's just, it's just, this is the tip of the iceberg. That's nice so, to see. This is just kind of some shock resistance therapy for <laughs> our listeners. It, it's nice to see these psychiatrists held accountable. They weren't held accountable during Nazi Germany, not one of them. And, um, you know, they were just killed en masse back then. And then, of course, Ernst Rudin and his cronies came over to the American admi- administration and taught the same thing over again. And it, it's nice to see these psychopaths finally being held accountable. Yep, yet another one. WFSB.com Newington Camp Counselor faces judge after alleged strangulation 
The uh, Newington camp counselor accused of strangling a child appeared before a judge on Thursday. The incident happened over the summer when many children were going to camp. Police said 22-year-old Vicente Ithier Vicente allegedly put his hands around an 8-year-old's neck at the summer camp in July. He was reportedly working inside of the Newington Parks and Recreation Summer Camp when it happened. It doesn't matter if you're in a school or in a grocery store, you can't put your hands on anybody, said Deborah Elgard, a Newington parent. According to the Ithier Vicente's attorney, he was trying to hurt the child. It's important to take note that there are no injuries or marks suffered by the child, and I think it's that it's going to speak volumes as the case progresses, said lawyer Jake Donovan. Another staff member saw the incident, intervened, and t then told the supervisor. Police were eventually notified, and the camp counselor was arrested on, uh, and charged with risk and, of injury to a minor and strangulation. The way the police report reads expresses a level of frustration on the part of the child and my client in his explanation in his uh, explanation was actually trying to calm the child down Donovan added. Elgard said even if his intentions weren't to hurt the child if it was my kid I would definitely want to press charges. If my child told me something like that I would believe my child. I went this news call to town to see if Ithier Vicente was still employed but has not received a reply. Ithier Vicente is expected to appear in court on October 8th. So, you know, there's somebody that's been evidenced to have uh, been harming a child. Uh, evidence is already there. So this litigation under the law merchant schematic so a huge waste of time and money. That's why the public law is so beautiful. There's either evidence or there's not. Okay? And eyewitness, you know, multiple collaborated witnesses. Well, that's evidence. So, what are we playing around, dancing around in these courts for? And let's see. Okay, let's see, that story is about to come up for me. So, we'll go on to the next one. Globegazette.com news. Mason City social worker charged with having sex with client. Mason City social worker is facing charges for allegedly having a sexual relationship with a client. The Iowa Board of Social Work has filed four counts against Lisa Bailey, including engaging in a dual relationship with a current client, engaging in a sexual relationship with a current client, practicing in a professional relationship while experiencing a mental or physical impairment that adversely affects the ability to perform professional duties, and engaging in unethical conduct or practice harmful or detrimental to the public. According to the documents filed in the case, Bailey allegedly made numerous phone calls and texts to a client in 2014 and eventually engaged in a sexual relationship with the client in 2014. Bailey also allegedly admittedly admitted that she was mentally distressed and taking prescription medication that affected her judgment at the time of the incidents. She was allegedly sent home from work on multiple occasions because she was too emotionally distraught to work. Bailey has since been terminated from her employment due to the alleged inappropriate relationship with the client, according to the documents. The hearing on the case has been set for 4 p.m. November 11th in Des Moines, Iowa. Wow. And another one by Sid Dunst. These are interesting days for sure. In KCCI.com, state lawmaker charged with sexual abuse at care center. Now, this was with his own wife, so this right. is interesting. But she's still out of it. Yeah. So, let's see, uh, Henry Rand, 78, of Garner, was arrested and charged with third-degree sexual abuse, and 
and um, Rands is a Republican representing district, uh, House District 8, which covers part of Coosa, Hancock, and Wright counties. He served in the Iowa House of Represent uh, re Representatives since 1997 and was up for re-election in November, but on August 4th withdrew his uh, as a candidate from the race, authorities said that Garner Police Department responded to the Concord Care Center on May 23rd on a report of sexual abuse involving one of the center's residents. Okay, now, so the Garner Police Department requests the assistance from the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigations in the investigation. I'll continue reading if you want. Authorities said Rains committed sexual abuse by performing a sex act on a woman suffering from mental defect or incapacity after he had been told that the victim did not have the cognitive ability to give consent to any sexual activity. Court documents show that, on, that during an interview with the DCI agent on June 12, 2014, the defendant admitted to having sexual contacts with the victim and to having a copy of the documentation regarding the victim inability to give consent due to her lack of cognitive ability. The department spokesman confirmed to the Associated Press that the victim was Rand's wife, Donna Rand's. She died last week. Rand's was arrested Friday and taken to Hancock County Jail. Who does that? Who does that when their, when their spouse is, is, is lying there dying? Actually. Yeah. It's just psychopathy. It's absolutely disgusting. A legislator. These are the actions of these criminal minds and psychopaths. Yeah, so the Hancock County Attorney's Office has referred the case to the Iowa Attorney General's Office for prosecution. The Rayan family statement, uh, Rayan's attorney, Joel Eunuch, released a statement on Friday afternoon. Our family would like to comment on the very private matter. No made very, uh, must be now made very public by the filing of a criminal charge by the attorney general's office out of Des Moines. We love Donna. She filled a gap in dad's life after our mom died and dad filed a gap in her life, filled a gap in her life after her husband died. From what we saw, they truly loved each other and were great for each other. Donna and all of us declined over time. Her daughter's uh, choice to put her in a nursing home. This was their decision and we respect that decision. We all have relatives in nursing homes and none of us would say we love them less because of their location and Donna's location did not change our dad's love for Donna nor her love for him I did not change it did not change their marriage relationship and so he continued to con to have contact with his spouse in the nursing home who among us would not well, that's the statement from the attorney yeah human beings would not we're, we're not interested in raping children or the mentally disabled or the infirm only attorneys are interested in that kind of behavior and, and um, you know, again, going back to the psychopathic mind, that's just foul. You're sick, man. Who is that attorney? Uh, let's see here. Um, he needs to be investigated for uh, child predation and preying on the elderly. Yeah. Do they list his name here? I don't see his name here. I don't know. It's just his family attorney. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up on that one because I was sick. Just his mindset is sick. Who would not? That's sick. Sick. She was dying. She just passed away, dude. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's see. We believe that nursing home patients do better emotionally and physically with consistent and proper social stimuli from spouses, relatives, and friends accusing a spouse of a crime for continuing a relationship with his spouse in a nursing home seems to be incredibly illogical and unnatural as well as incredibly hurtful no 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 assisted living is something different than a nursing home and uh, this again this attorney is just absolutely psychopathic he's insane yeah so just to finish it off we want it to be clear the attorney the attorney general's office not the Hancock County Attorney's 
office file these charges. Whether the, whether the motivation for filing is political or monetary, we intend to fight that poisonous motivation in any way we can and clear Dad's name. Of course, uh, that's a statement from the attorney. Like, yeah, they have. And of course, they want to litigate. They absolutely. love litigation. And, and this clearly indicates a tie between the Hancock County Attorney's Office that did not file charges. It should have been them. It's their jurisdiction to protect that elderly female from harm and being preyed on by some sick, twisted legislator. This is sick. And she was a widow, it says. How long ago did she lose, lose her spouse? Was she being prayed on the whole time? It's sick. Sick. She's not furniture. She's not an object. Sick. You just have these psychopathic twisted minds. It makes my stomach ill. Ex-consultant found guilty of fraud tied to lawmaker from New York Times, nytimes.com. Day after State Senator John L. Sampson survived a heated primary in Brooklyn, one of his former consultants was convicted on federal corruption charges of conspiring with Mr. Sampson to steal $100,000 from the New York Democratic Senate Campaign Committee in an invo invoicing scheme. After a one-week trial, a federal jury found the consultant Melvin E. Lowe guilty of conspiring conspiracy and wire fraud. He was also convicted of subscribing to false tax returns, failing to file tax returns, and causing a bank employee to make a false report. Mr. Lowe, 53, of Manhattan, remained free on bail after appearing in federal court in White Plains on Wednesday in front of Judge Vincent L. Brissetti. His court-appointed lawyer, Theodore S. Green, said in a telephone interview that his client planned to appeal Mr. Lowe's sentencing and that was set for December 19th. Yeah, they have him out on the street so he can be whacked. Look at that story. They charged him and he was found guilty of uh, conspiracy? Who was he conspiring with? So they're, they're using him as bait. That's not good. That's not good at all. He should be protected in a, in a secure setting to prevent the legislator there from whacking him. In a statement on Wednesday, Preet Bharara, okay, He's the uh, big uh, prosecuting attorney out there. The United States attorney in Manhattan said Mr. Lowe's conviction would help to restore public confidence in New York state politics. He used to be called the district attorney. It's not interesting that he's the United States attorney. Yeah, capital United States. Yeah, well. United States Incorporated attorney would be the more correct. I don't think that's what it's referring to because they called their district something else before. Hmm. I think that's just a typo. Could be. Interesting. Um, let's see. I've been noticing a lot of typos in the media in general mm -hmm. from all over for whatever reason. Yeah, that's it. It's the typo's fault. It's not that's the reader's it. fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as the jury found low persistence, participated in a series of backroom deals in which the bridge of corruption extended between the world of elected officials and their complicit consultants, he said. Consultants, like elected officials, need to be held accountable in order to clean up our political system. The verdict arrived as Mr. Sampson celebrated winning his primary in Brooklyn despite the cloud of a federal indictment in an unrelated case and endorsements of his three rivals by Prominent Democrats like Mayor Bill de Blasio and Governor Andrew M. Como. Absolutely. They always support corruption. It's a brotherhood. Corruption loves corruption. Mr. Sampson, who is not has not been charged in the case is under federal indictment and charges that he lied about his ownership of a liquor store and embezzled more than four hundred thousand dollars from sales of uh, foreclosed homes. Absolutely, that's what they do. Herbert. Oh, they're all in each other's pocket. Yeah. Cuomo, he sent out a subpoena for investigating himself, and when he realized it was himself, he pulled back the subpoena. Where are those <laughs> charges? Yeah. Yeah, they should allow those charges go through. It's funny. That would be an interesting court play, wouldn't it? 
Herbert Haddad, a spokesman for Mr. Bahara, said his office could not say whether prosecutors would seek charges against Mr. Sampson in connection with Mr. Lowe's crimes, efforts to reach Mr. Sampson and his lawyer Joshua Kalangelo Bryan by phone and email on Wednesday night were unsuccessful. Mr. Lowe, who was arrested in October, was convicted on all of the nine charges brought against him in a criminal complaint. Perry A. Carbone and James M uh, McMahon, uh, McMahon prosecuted the case. According to the United States Attorney News release, Mr. Lowe has hired a consultant by the campaign committee after Democrats took control of the state Senate in 2009 and Mr. Sampson was appointed the leader of his party's conference. At Mr. Sampson's request in 2010, he arranged for a New Jersey-based consultant to build a committee for $100,000 in printing services that were not performed. Mr. Lowe allowed the consultant to keep $5,000 and he gave $20,000 to Michael Neves, a political operative based in Queens who had helped Democrats gain, regain power. He kept the remaining $75,000 for his own firm which he used to renovate his second home in Georgia. Absolutely. Oh, Why isn't not? that it was nice? Just, it was just laying there. It was just laying there. It must have been his, right? Yeah, right. Uh, Mr. Lowe was also convicted on charges that he failed to report more than $2.1 in consulting income from 2007 to 2012. No. He filed tax returns for 2007 to 2009 in 2010 and reported less than $25,000 a year uh, income. He's poor, just like those poorest members of Congress. Yeah, and poor uh, Hillary Clinton. Absolutely, they all are. They're just destitute. He did not file returns for the years 2010, 2011, and 2012. The release also said Mr. Lowe caused an assistant manager at his bank to make a false report to his mortgage lender, reporting $80,000 in his checking account when it contained only $2,156. Sure. The conviction stemmed from an investigation that had already felled Shirley L. Huntley, a former Democratic state senator from Queens. She was sentenced to a year and a day in prison after she pleaded guilty to stealing taxpayers' money. Oh, yeah, and she's the rat that rolled on all of them. I'm loving this. Oh, man, she's like the play. She's typhoid married for legislators. Um, she, so she um, pled guilty to stealing that money through a nonprofit organization she was running. Malcolm A. Smith, a Democratic Sen uh, state senator from Queens who was seeking re-election but lost his primary on Tuesday, is awaiting a retrial on bribery charges that grew out of the inquiry. Right, she's an informant that uh, Shirley won. Oh man, she's been just busy behind the scenes. And the judge granted a mistrial in June. Absolutely. Ah, technical difficulties. Come on, we can't hold him guilty. There's no such thing as technical difficulties in the, under the public law. Right, either there's evidence or not. Right, and if there's evidence, there's no such thing as double jeopardy either. Because the first case was probably civil. I mean, this is just so sad that these attorneys thought that they could get away with everything. When everything is founded on the Commerce Clause. Insurance is founded on the risk created from the opportunity of getting caught. And, uh, oh, oh no, somebody got caught with their hands in the cookie jar. Well, I had, uh, let's see here, we'll get back to some lawmakers here in a minute. I want to uh, cover this one um, from govslaves.info CIA mystery plane busted with 35 kilos of heroin Daniel Hopsicker, let's see uh, must be the writer newly obtained FAA registration records reveal that the American mystery plane busted this July with 35 kilos of heroin at the airport outside Sydney Australia was a CIA plane gasp uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> At least it had been when it rolled off the assembly line 40 years earlier, yeah. courtesy a CIA deal with the U.S. Forest Service. Absolutely, Warden. And the CIA never sells off its planes. Nope. 
American registered mystery plane in Australia was a Merlin 3 twin engine turbo prop tail number N224HR FAA registration records show it was commissioned in the early 70s by the US Forest Service from aircraft manufacturer Swearingen in San Antonio part of an operation to sheep dip CIA planes through the U.S. Forest Service. Right, and the Department of Transportation, Bridges Trust, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Union. They're all trafficking in children and drugs and everything else. Sheep dip is a spook speak for concealing the source of true ownership or something, or at the very least hiding it from Congress. Yeah, yeah. 1947... National Security Act says uh, Congress created the CIA. It's the director. Yeah, so who are they really trying to conceal this from? Congress, the directors, and Dianne Feinstein. When the plane was ordered, the CIA was merely anticipating congressional calls for reining in the CIA through tellingly forcing the agency to divest its proprietary airlines. By the time the plane was delivered two years later, the calls had grown much louder. In another two years, they'd become successful. Yeah. That's just another uh, downplay and misinformation advertisement. Or it was a CIA plane, but it must have gotten missing. Like the Malaysian airliner. Mm-hmm. It must have gotten missing. It wasn't theirs at the time of the crime, but we don't know who else it is, but uh, we'll point the finger elsewhere anyway, because, you know, it's us. So the discovery in Amer of this American registered plane del delivering drugs at an Australian airport heralded, according to Australian law enforcement, a sophisticated drug network that had begun using the tiny Illawarra Regional Airport, 60 miles south of Sydney, to import guns and drugs. Absolutely. You can't ship them through a main airport. Look at their uh, cartels in Mexico. They use out of the way airports. Uh, federal government is trafficking drugs constantly through there. And 27 CFR 72.11 says that they are the cartels and they're charging people for undercutting the federal government. So it's, it's, it's nice to see this being exposed. Uh, in any manner way possible because this is sick. I mean, they, they use the same shipping lines through the treaties to ship women, men, and children. And uh, hopefully this helps remove their capabilities somewhat. Sickos. The purchase of the, uh, the purchase in the U.S. of the Merlin 3 and the plane's subsequent two month long saga on its journey home to Australia, an Australian law enforcement official told Sydney's Daily Telegraph, were actions undertaken at the behest of a major international crime syndicate. Absolutely, who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who? I wonder who that yeah. international crime syndicate could be. <laughs> Police were said to be closed mouth and tight lipped after revealing they had confiscated 35 kilos. They refused to identify the drug involved, which is heroin. Absolutely. But police prosecutor Sergeant Sean Thackeray gave things away when he let slip. We're talking about the organization of a plane to import a large amount of substance, the value of $9 million. No price quotes per kilo for heroin consuming countries vary widely from a low of $100,000 to a high in Australia, of all places, of 375000 if we were if we were if we take a figure in the middle, 250,000, 35 kilos is worth 8.7 million, very close to Sergeant Thackeray's quote of 9 million. Right, and and again, you know, the most interesting thing is that uh, even though they're trafficking drugs and they've got these cartels. They're still practicing usury because the manufacture of these drugs or the garnering of these drugs is well over the 12% allowed under the tables. You know, it's just, it's been interesting to watch the fall and of Of course, these you're calls. referring to the 12 tables from Nicaea. Absolutely, and, and the law that they founded everything off of. I mean, table one, table two is 
is Title One UCC, Title One CFR, Title One USC, and it and it follows this train of thought because that's how they were supposed to be garnering the Treasury funds. However, they interpreted that out and went away from the public law because it's more beneficial to their corporate interests. And now they're finding their comeuppance because, of course, once the Treasury has evidence of embezzlement, they were cut off. Their commissions have been cut off. And then this next section reads, really, a major international syndicate? With the announcement that a global cartel was moving planes like chess pieces across a chessboard, the size of the outback hope, hope surged in some circles that a few American drug lords might finally achieve the recognition recognition they deserve. Absolutely. Just Not, look at Congress start picking out names. Chess pieces. I'm thinking of uh, Brzezinski's uh, grand chess board. Absolutely. That's Shepard itself. The twin engine Merlin three was picked up in Punta Gorda at the Charlotte County Airport, which is to general aviation what the black hole of Calcutta is to after school detention. Why were two Australian pilots picking up the Merlin 3 in Punta Gorda, Florida? The owner of the plane was a dentist in Columbia, Missouri. Absolutely. The ADA. Come on. Smart cop might have figured that pressing the flesh in Punta Gorda with a few American drug lords might could have provided folks little uh, living in little further off the beaten path some valuable networking opportunities. Sorry, it was a hard sentence. Um, but um, in other words, they're saying that, uh, that the, uh, you know, that uh, figuring, let's see here, a smart cop. You know, in other words, they're calling these cops dumb, I guess. I don't know. It's just sad to see, um, you know, the, the whole schematic, it talks, it goes through and shows how fall guys were fall guys and all sorts of stuff. And, and the U.S. Inc. is just these corporations. They're in corporated states. So here's one dentist office. The other one was a, what, sky drive, diving instructor. Oh, well, you can follow this right through to the child and female trafficking industries because they use the same airports. They use the same port authority. And ultimately, on the ground, when you're charged with, like, speeding tickets through the Department of Transportation, that's just the inland traveling system that they have established through their charters and treaties. So, in other words, they're saying that this might have provided folks living uh, a little further off the beaten path some valuable network networking opportunities. Okay, I guess that last sentence makes more sense for read the next. Alas, smart cops are always the first to be let go. Mm-hmm. Think back upon that uh, 1999 ABC report where courts ruled that it was okay to hire cops with the IQ of 110 or lower. Right, it makes them easier to take down as fall guys later for your drug cartel, which we've watched throughout this last year, horrifyingly. Cops are being nailed for this, but it's the attorneys and the doctors and the dentists and the other corporations behind the scenes pushing them. So the first well-publicized arrest in the big Aussie American heroin bus was a 43-year-old Australian skydiving instructor, Bernard Stevenmore, charged with being part of a criminal organization and dealing with the proceeds of crime. Uh, when he was arrested, police found $70,000 in cash, suspected of being the proceeds of drug trafficking. That just days earlier, while they had him under surveillance, he had tried to buy an aviation business in a local Australian airport, making $300,000 down payment in cash. Absolutely. They're, they're going along. They're broadening their little holdings there. Exactly like Jesus said in Matthew 23. Even middle schoolers just selling a little weed to pay for their little league uniform or fresh rugby toys or a new cricket bat. Uh, no, this is an absolutely boneheaded play. It was not the kind of money laundering move one expects to see from any self-respecting drug kingpin. So just who and where 
are the cartel heavies. Uh, fire on the mountain. Before the American public learned of the cozy deal to sheep dip airplanes between the CIA and the Forest Service, 14 people had to burn to death in a forest fire in Colorado. In August 1994, 14 firefighters burned to death in an out-of-control forest fire in Colorado. The inferno was sparked by lightning at the base of Storm King Mountain. Local firefighters, hot shots, and smoke jumpers jumped in to fight it. Winds whipped flames that grew to be 100 feet tall. The fire raged uphill right at the firefighters. They fled. 14 people were trapped and died. Survivor Eric Heitke was forced to flee for his life uphill. Um, this must be on to another story here. This doesn't. Well, no, this is probably the same story. Okay, I'm not sure where they're going here with this. Um, flames crackling mere millimeters behind him. Hipke clambered up to the last steep stretch of a rugged mountainside engulfed in fire. Heitke screamed and hurled himself over the ridge. Investigators concluded later that he made it with five seconds to spare. Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration subsequently cited the Forest Service for inadequate use of aviation resources. Air support was inadequate for implementing strategies and tactics. Where were all the tankers? Well, let me tell you where they were. They were off transporting drugs across the globe at the behest of Congress. Yeah, now we 14 see. Fourteen firefighters died. Because Congress. Congress's drug money was more important. Absolutely. According to whistleblower attorney and former CIA pilot Gary Etel, they were out of the country. Forest Service aircraft were being used illegally in Europe and Latin America. Many of them were running drugs. So, okay, so, so this 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 uh, this guy didn't want to go down with him, so he oh, rolled on him. Oh yeah, he was part of this. He's this like, is, I have all this information, but I'm not going to be the fall guy. Let's yeah. Take him, him, Why him, does he have him, all this information? Mark. Absolutely, and it's always the same. Always the same. So, moves on. Well, I think that they, segment. our listeners should also be reading this story. What was the link on this one? It's at uh, Gov T like. The government slaves dot info and it's CIA hyphen mystery hyphen plane hyphen busted hyphen thirty five hyphen kilos hyphen heroin. Absolutely, and and you can verify all of this information in one uh, paragraph twenty seven CFR seventy two dot eleven commercial crimes commercial crimes running crimes against the laws of revenue, meaning that Congress is charging people for running drugs and prostitution kidnapping because those are undercutting Congress. Yeah, and what comes out of this is this incredibly despicable situation where uh, air support for this fire that were allocated and paid for by taxpayers uh, couldn't be utilized because they were busy uh, running drugs. Elsewhere, and, and this ties into um, Last year, they were uh, rationing military members. They couldn't afford to feed them while they were embezzling money out of the Department of Defense. Um, what else? I mean, they, they don't put any any money where it's supposed to be going because they're never adhering to the public law. And on top of that, they're always cashing in hand over fist. And uh, that's what we're all about, holding them accountable. This crap is no longer going to be occurring. So there's more information on this Australian connection, and the next sec section is saying that the Forest Service deception goes back to the end of World War II. Absolutely, and you can see the movement through the 1934-1935 uh, Federal and National Housing Acts, and then uh, the upswing was with the Preservation Acts on the Reclamation Acts, and they're all tied together. These are just business schematics for a criminal enterprise. And this section here is a cute uh, sound blurb. Was the CIA blackmailing Smokey the Bear? Absolutely, that's all it does. FBI, CIA, it shakes down human beings. There's the, uh, there's a mention of the Forest Service Dropping a dime on the Forest Service in 1976, Senator Frank Church's committee 
This is the church committee reports that I refer to often. Grilled CIA General Counsel Lawrence Houston about the agency's questionable and illegal operation of proprietary airlines. Church was clear that he wanted the CIA to divest itself of what had grown into the largest airline in the world. CIA has never been the kind of agency to take the heat of if there's anyone else around to throw under the bus. Lawrence Houston offered that the CIA had routinely used the U.S. Forest Service to provide cover for its covert activities. And he said there was more. And you can find all of that in the church committee reports. They are a lot. It's a lot of dry freaking reading and I hated it. But it's very important that everybody reads them because it says exactly what they're doing. All of the covert ops, all of the wars that you see playing out before you, they're all CIA presentations. These are FBI agents on the ground produced by the CIA to kill civilians and then put you into fear, the average citizen, uh, by which you choose uh, any kind of form of government to protect you from the CIA and FBI on the ground and the directives of Congress perpetrating that war against you, killing your kids, killing your mothers and fathers, and bombing wherever you are. They've been perpetrating this for years and years and years, and all of that information is all available. It's always been available. Nobody wants to read it. Yeah, they tie it into um, HBSC. Household um, bank. Did they admit to laundering drug money again? HSBC, uh, HBSC is well known by now for this. And that's what the IRS was set up to do. It's a money laundering system. It takes uh, FRNs offshore, cleans everything up, and then puts it back into the petrodollar. So Questions answered and question remain is the last segment. And this is a pretty long uh, article, but it's uh, worth the read here. Beautiful to see. Uh, well, let's see here. So we'll get back to... Um, some lawmakers here. How's that? I'm up for anything. I'm just uh, winding down after this week. This week has been really hectic as the clerical position goes. Mark Sanford calls off engagement to Argentina and fiance A. Uh, Representative Mark Sanford, Republican for South Carolina, on Friday posted a lengthy message on Facebook saying he's ending his engagement to the Argentina woman he famously disappeared to go visit in 2009 because of tension caused by his ex-wife. Now why isn't she being charged with harassment and intimidation and control tactics, low intensity conflict, as well as her attorney and the judge and everybody else involved in the schematic? Right, because uh, they're putting um, you know, they're pointing the finger at her, but they're redistributing him using yeah. her. Yeah. Um, so it goes on to say, no relationship can stand forever. This tension of being forced to pick between the one you love and your own son or daughter, Sanford writes. And for this reason, Maria Bellin Chaper and I have decided to call off the engagement. Uh, so, but, you know, he's a lawmaker, so I don't feel sorry for him. Absolutely On the other hand, not. you know, I mean, this has come up in, in the sense that they've been doing this to us forever. Absolutely. I mean, my own situation, I can, I'm here to testify that my children are, are still being held captive, um, you know, um, by court process. They're they being just, held hostage. Absolutely. They wanted to play hardball, and that's what they're getting. Folks, well, I, I, we don't play games. We don't uh, negotiate with terrorists. And again, you know, recently we learned that Rocco is so far inside of this thing that we couldn't even get one of our ordained ministers in there recently to check on him and see if he's okay because of their level of fear. And I'm here to say it gets worse. I am the nastiest person you've ever met when it comes to children and the stealing of children, the rape, the molestation, the abuse, the torture, the fourth generation warfare, the low intensity conflict that's been used against humanity. I'm the worst person you want to deal with right now. And it got gets better for me. And it will get better for the children. I can guarantee you this. 
So keep on keeping on. Keep torturing him. Keep locking yourselves down because it gets worse. So there's just a lawmaker going through what um, all of us have been put through by them. So do I feel sorry for him? No. I wanted to cover that story of the nasty um, dentist because I was just absolutely appalled today. Absolutely, um, not just appalled. I mean, this is, it was horrifying to read on the Huffington Post. Uh, and uh, it, it needs to be aired everywhere. And it needs to go viral what this monster did to this female um, employee. This is coming off of the HuffingtonPost.com. A Pennsylvania community is rallying around a woman who was fired from her job at an oral surgeon's office following her diagnosis with cancer. I don't think that I have to read the story and the opinion, but I'd like to read his letter to her so that everyone is aware of this psychopath that is possibly still within their community. And um, this letter. It is on this Dr. Uh, Visnich, V-I-S-N-I-C-H letterhead, and it's handwritten in his hand. Yeah, George, George Visnich. George Visnich, Jr., DMD. He writes to her on August 11, 2014, Carol. You are currently engaged in a battle against cancer that will be demanding physically mentally and emotionally, period. The symptoms of this disease, the pain medications you will need, and the side effects of the chemotherapy will be significant and distracting, period. You will not be able to function in my office at the level required while battling for your life, period. Because of this, I'm laying you off without pay as of August 11, 2014. Your last paycheck will be mailed to you this Friday, 8 15 14. Our thoughts and prayers are with you at this, as you fight this horrible disease. Thanks for your time at this niche oral surgery. I hope your battle is swift, smooth, and successful. <laughs> as always, and he signs it, Dr. Visnich. What a nice man. What a, oh man, what a piece of work. I hope that, you know, my, my prayers go out to this female, first of all. And my heart goes out to this female that's suffering so many things at the hands of the medical industry, including this psychopath here. But, uh, you know, my prayer is that somebody finds him one day and takes a bat upside the back of him or something. This is terrible. Absolutely horrifying. Yeah, what a really nice guy, huh? Sicko dentists. I mean, it's just... Uh, yeah, they're the ones putting the RFID so, uh, chips in the fillings, too, come absolutely. to light here not, not long ago. Absolutely. And you can find that at TammyPepperman.org. We've done a couple uh, reports on the RFID chipping, including their own works. And um, it's been an interesting journey, to say the least. And one in three uh, human beings that were... Uh, picked for this study were found to have RFID chips in their dentistry or dental cavities, uh, dental works, hips, knees, and it's all for marketing. They're marketing using this technique and they're not telling people these things and it's absolutely horrifying. Now well, let's see, from MassLive.com, we've got um, a uh, cop well, let's see, you know, a tow truck driver stole $1,500 from a stripper arrested after passing out on the turnpike, police say. Westfield, a woman who was found drunk and unconscious at the wheel of her car on the Massachusetts turnpike said $1,500 went missing from her car during the arrest. And Massachusetts State Police say the tow truck driver took the cash. But the NAS 36 of Jacopi is charged in Westfield District Court with larceny of more than $250. Nash's Thursday arraignment. Philip, Judge Philip uh, Content set bail for $1,000. The arraignment was originally scheduled in June, but Nash failed to appear at the first date. Why wasn't a warrant issued then? Yeah. Yeah, well, because these tow truck drivers a lot of times are working hand in hand with the cops to uh, create business. Absolutely. Uh, we covered that recently here too with some other stories. Sickos. 
from the Daily Mail. Uh, I duped broke 23 year old former intern suing CBS David Letterman unpaid 40 hour working weeks says coerced lawsuit hungry attorneys uh, wait a minute here it's not a very good uh, headline there I copied was it uh, anyways uh, oh, I get any if I need to pull that up is why yeah but this was about David Letterman and uh, an intern was filing a case against him and it turned out to be that it was this attorney that was uh, pushing for the lit litigation. Absolutely, they're all ambulance chasers. It doesn't matter what the ambulance is. Remember that one attorney that went ahead with his client to uh, file a restraining order against Letterman and she said that he was harassing her over the television and stuff? Yeah. That attorney cashed in, but that woman was nuts, and the, but the attorney took advantage of her. Sure. Yeah, this one here actually, um, so the uh, headline actually reads, Broke former intern, 23 drops lawsuit against CBS and David Letterman over unpaid 40-hour weeks, saying she was coerced by lawsuit-hungry attorneys. Mallory Masalem, 26, filed a class action lawsuit against CBS and David Letterman's production company. She accused the defendants of violating minimum wage and overtime laws. She has now dropped the lawsuit, saying she felt duped into making the claims. Masalem claimed she was told by lawyers that she would be joining a hundred other interns as part of the class action lawsuit. CBS called suit part of a nationwide trend of class action lawyers attacking internship opportunities provided by companies in the media. Oh, that's a good hit piece against attorneys. They're just vicious, aren't they? They prey on everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. Intern, child, elderly females, elderly males, widows, widowers. It doesn't matter who you are. They don't discriminate. They like money. That's right. They are very well known to prey on the elderly and children, particularly. Absolutely. 27 CFR 72.11 says that any time you go into court and you are charged with child predation, that means that the government is cashing in on that. They're renting that child's body to the predator. That is prostitution that they define as you going against in 27 CFR 72.11. They say that it's only their game. Congress is the only one that can charge for the use of human bodies, including six months old children, 12 year olds, you name it. Sickos. Absolutely horrifyingly sick. They all need to be in Gitmo and not whole in Syria. Another good hit piece on attorneys here over the Daily Mail. Judge who leaked details of Charlize Theron's adoption online and complained about wives who wouldn't have sex is barred for life. Faulkner County Circuit Judge Mike Maggio was given a lifetime ban revealed Theron's adoption two months before she publicly announced it. Father of five also made offensive remarks about a woman's role. He likened bestiality to sex in the LGBT community. Oh no, it's usually judges and attorneys doing that kind of crap and forcing children into those kind of situations. Psychiatrists, camp counselors, youth counselors. All these folks that work hand in hand with these pedophiles. State Supreme Court accepted the lifetime ban that was agreed to by Faulkner County Circuit Judge Mike Maggio and the Arkansas Judicial Discipline and Disability Commission. The disciplinary panel ruled last month that using a pseudonym uh, Gox Judge, Gaw Judge? G E A U X? Not familiar. Uh, Maggio entered an online forum of Louisiana State University sports fans and shared details from Theron's 2012 adoption of a baby in the same court division where he served. Of course, oh, I see. That was the name. That was the name he used, I guess. He was online. acting as a CIA human, massive agent. Isn't that interesting? A judge working as massive. Comments in the January 2012 divulged details of Theron's adoption two months before she publicly released the information. While others talked about women in a derogatory way, and another likely 
are another likened bestiality to sex in the transgender and gay communities. Yeah, that's him. He's acting as human mass, and I mean, he knows that that is false. It's it's him and his cronies, his judges and attorneys, preying on children that like that kind of thing. And creating more of that ism stuff Absolutely. that Congress cashes in on. Absolutely, and and in this article, even he's he's preying on. Gay and lesbians and transgender. He's promoting a civil war. When in reality, he is the predator. Stop pointing the fingers away from people, Mr. Lewis, and all of these other folks that like the child predation industry. Sick of this crap. Uh, let's see. So, let's see. Um, he, he said a judge friend handled the case before admitting that he was also involved in the case. When a poster asked if, if she adopted a black child, he said that she had. Such proceedings are confidential in Arkansas, and there are no cases in the state's online court records that mentions Theron's name. Her publicist, Amanda Silverman, declined to comment. Yeah, he's just racist. Yeah. Look at him. He's, he's bringing color right into everything. Who cares? Oh, my goodness. He's just foul. Even his picture, he looks foul. Exactly. Nasty, nasty, dirty man. Let's see here. Um, some Indiana news. I have um, the uh, BMV seeks to block release of video depositions. Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles has asked a court to block the release of video depositions in a lawsuit that claims the agency overcharged motorists. Attorneys for the BMV argue that the release of the depositions could discourage witnesses from testifying for fear of receiving public scrutiny and unwanted media attention. Well, no, that doesn't fly under the public law. Evidence is evidence. If, if you've perpetrated a harm, you're going to be held accountable, and if you haven't, then, you know, deal with it. You, you can't claim your emotions are being hurt. There's no such thing as an emotion. The Indianapolis Star reports the agency requested a protective order in Marion Superior Court on Wednesday. The move follows release of the video deposition of former BMV Deputy Director Matthew Foley. Foley testified under oath that top agency officials knew for years that they were overcharging customers but hid the practice to avoid budget problems. The lawsuit claims the BMV overcharged motorists $30 million to $40 million dating from the early 2000s. And they don't want to be held accountable. No, you can't share my name. Don't share that video. What the hell? Okay, you're criminals, you don't get a say. Exactly. There, there are no more games. No, no more. I mean, this is just funny now. A few more from Indiana here, WSBT.com. South Bend City Councilman is blaming his wife for writing Facebook comment under his name, suggesting Mayor Pete Buttigieg should be removed from office, according to her partner's it's the South Bend Tribune. The comment was linked to Derek Dieter's personal account and appeared on a Tribune article about the possible sale of Elbow uh, Golf Course. The comment read, Don't sell any of them. Fire this administration. Dieter said his wife let the, uh, left the comment thinking she was logged on to her account. The council is currently developing social and media guidelines for its members following the Henry Davis Jr.'s controversial post. So they all ki got yeah. all kinds of problems in the city council yeah, there in it, South Bend. They get caught doing things and they want to, you know, tighten up the security. I don't think so. What the hell? This is freaking hilarious. Do you remember how they, they entered into a attrition agreement a while back? They're still howling, aren't they? Not wanting to uphold, uphold the public law at all. Uh, one more from South Bend. It looks like... Uh Let's see. State police investigate claims against South Bend Chief of Staff after serious allegations made against South Bend Mayor's Chief of Staff, Catherine Ruse. The city is asking Indiana State Police to investigate, uh, and neighbors say his photos of, the, of city workers pouring concrete in Ruse's property. So apparently, this is a situation where he was uh, or she was uh, using. Uh, Public money to uh, city funds, right? Yeah. To um, renovate her own property. Absolutely, that's a function of these folks here. Uh, in Laporte, Indiana, uh, former Laporte County deputy auditor indicted. 
Former LaPorte County Deputy Auditor has been indicted by a federal grand jury for allegedly embezzling more than $150,000. Mary Ray, 66, is charged with two counts of theft of government monies and two counts of making false statements on a tax return. Court documents say the alleged embezzling happened from September 2011 through December 2012. Uh, let's see here. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford is withdrawing from a re-election bid in the upcoming mayoral race, according to CNN. News partner CBC, the controversial mayor was hospitalized this week after the discovery of an abdominal oh. tumor. We thought this would occur, remember? We said they're going to try to take him out. That's just sad. Yeah. That's sad to use him as like a, a monkey doing tricks and then, you know, diagnose him with stuff. That's just sad. I know it is. From ECNS.CN, Japanese lawmaker charged with drug trafficking in China. A Japanese lawmaker has been charged with drug trafficking by a court in the southern Chinese city of Gangzhou appeared in court this morning on the first day of the trial. Takuma Suguragi, who is 71 years old, is a member of the Inazawa Municipal Assembly in Aiki Prefecture. Japanese Senator Takuma Sagaragi is now standing trial in the Ganzu Intermediate Court. The trial started at half past nine this morning. The 71-year-old was a member of the Inazawa Municipal Assembly and Arakai Prefecture. He is facing a drug smuggling charge. He was detained by police after more than three kilograms of methamphetamine was found in his luggage during a baggage check at Guangzhou Bayun International Airport last October. More than 60 people, including the senator's wife, officers from Japan's Consulate General in Guangzhou, deputies of the National People's Congress, and ordinary citizens are observing the trial present here, blah, 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 but these are interesting days. <coughs> these uh, Japanese lawmakers, American lawmakers, they're all the same. Just pushing drugs, drug trafficking, trafficking in children, trafficking in females, trafficking in males. Never ends, does it, until now. Yeah, let's see, how about a little, um, Love story here. One battle Napoleon could never win. How Emperor's wife Josephine insisted on prenup to keep his hands off her assets. Aww. An 18th century prenup between Napoleon Bonaparte and his first wife Josephine, Josephine de Baharnes, is set to be auctioned in Paris. Right. Yeah, I remember he was a uh, quite the interesting trader there. Back and forth, back and forth. I wouldn't trust him either. Up. Interesting days. Uh, let's see here. More from this. Uh, George Zimmerman. Um, still lashing out at him. I will blank and kill you. Do you know who I am? George Zimmerman is accused of threatening to shoot driver in road rage incident. Absolutely. They're going to trigger him out. He's a false flag beyond false flag. That's his function. Police are investigating two reports involving the driver and 30-year-old Zimmerman, who was acquitted last year of second-degree murder charge in the shooting of Trayvon Martin. Right, they all game that. It was racism, it's corporate counsel that allowed that child to die, and then it was corporate counsel that allowed the shooter to get off. Police say that on Tuesday, the man called police after a truck pulled up next to him, and the driver yelled, Why are you pointing a finger at me? Yeah, he's a psychopath. He's used as a tool of destruction by the local corporate counsel. Bolivian man charged with smuggling AK-47 rifles pleads not guilty. This is from the Miami Herald, and I'm just going to read one little quote because we're running low on time. Quote, Javier Ninos Ria, 32, was arrested August 27th, apparently, as part of a broader international investigation that also led to the arrest of eight other people in the eastern Bolivian city of Santa Cruz de la Sierra. Two of the eight suspects were identified as police officers and three others as Bolivian Postal Service employees. And again, back to the ports and drug smuggling, drug trafficking, gun smuggling, gun trafficking. It's all in your backyard, folks, and it's the people that you're patronizing. We're about out of time. Do you have any parting 
words. I know that we've been celebrating here back channel, but uh, our listeners uh, don't get to witness a lot of things that are going on because we have such a condensed time limit now with even the four shows a week. We can't get through all of these stories, but uh, any parting words of hope? Well, let's see here. They did uh, find Pistorius uh, guilty of um, what, what, what was the charge here for, um, he was, he's going to do some time, that right. uh, Pistorius case, right. they where he him. killed his girlfriend. Right, they said it was negligent. And Culpable yeah. homicide is what they call, uh, right. found him guilty of. Right. And, and looking at all the evidence that I can see, you know, from our end here, I mean, uh, he was just, uh. Shooting uh, continually into the door. I mean, how many times right. you got to shoot uh, to scare somebody off or right. whatnot? He was looking to. Uh, I don't know. It just happened. Yeah. But the yeah. evidence doesn't say exactly what, but it's you know. It, but he could look at. He could be looking at a jail term up to 15 years. I mean, right. he killed his girlfriend. So the public law, murder is murder. Absolutely, and, and negligence is negligence. Yes, he fired through the door. He didn't know who was there, but uh, if she's not beside you and she's not in the same room, it's probably not a good idea to shoot through the door, right? Right. Yeah, I, I share this room with the, my girlfriend. Uh, I don't see her. Uh, somebody's in the bathroom. I wonder who that could be. Right. Right. I don't know. It's just... Uh, I, glad to see him being convicted of something here, because... Uh, Circumstances are just uh, didn't, didn't, crazy, didn't add up to me. Crazy Sanford judge. I wanted to get to that one too because I couldn't get to it on Thursday if we have enough time. Uh, this is OrlandoSentinel.com. Facebooking Sanford judge formally charged with, quote, bizarre behavior ethics breaches. Sanford Circuit Judge Linda Schoenover accused of retaliating against a wealthy divorcee for ignoring a Facebook friend request was charged Monday with a variety of ethics violations by state agency, the police judges. The most dramatic allegations relate to her behavior. Chernover's falsely accused Seminole County Courthouse employees of bugging her office and trying to sabotage her, according to the complaint. She installed a camera in her chambers, then called the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, handed over the video, and said it proved that people were sneaking into her office. FDLE investigated, according to the charges, and determined it was a maintenance worker just doing their jobs. It was a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. She's not end of story, but that was a funny one this last week. Yeah, yeah, indeed. All right, so, yeah, my prediction here uh, is we're going to see more and more lip service to, you know, uh, how this uh, government's, uh, y you know, s still got some hope here. If we just get the right candidates in and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Michelle is, is Michelle Obama going to run for the, the Senate now in Illinois? And, um, and and as we see this, as we see more and more lip servers, we're going to see more and more indictments and charges and arrests. So it's right. going to be hilarious, lots I think. Lots of fall guys, lots of informants. Stay tuned, everybody. We love you. Be well. All right, we'll see you.